Hello and welcome to Small Golds. In case you missed it, top gold and silver stories for the weekend in November 26, 2016. Gold and silver at the crossroads. Before we get started, just a reminder, at Small Gold there is a Black Friday, Cyber Weekend, Cyber Monday, gold and silver sale still going on through the Small Gold affiliates, the top gold and silver bullion dealers are running specials now through Monday. Please check that out if you do and you buy your gold and silver through Small Gold by clicking on the links or the banners, you will be directed to the gold and silver bullion dealers where you can make your purchase and you pay no more, no less than you would if you visited those sites directly. So if you're interested in buying gold or silver, not a recommendation that you do so, please check out the specials. There's some good specials and Small Gold gets a small commission if you purchase your gold and silver through uh, the Small Gold site, so we appreciate that. That's how the site supports itself. Thank you very much. Now, gold and silver reverse direction. Gold and silver prices fall to nine month lows. So we saw at the beginning of the year, gold and silver shot out of the barrel and headed straight higher. Then they spiked on Brexit. They kind of fell back a bit over towards the end of the summer, but then they really collapsed after Donald Trump got elected. Now, top stories of the week. Jill Stein, uh, she is the Green Party candidate. She has filed to raise money and filed to challenge the election results in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Those are three states that Donald Trump narrowly won. Um, the reason I mention this is if somehow these states were, they'd have to all be overturned, but if they were, then Hillary Clinton could conceivably win the Electoral College, and that would kind of throw everything into a tizzy. And of course, you'd have to keep your eye on precious metals, because as I mentioned, political uncertainty is often a, a reason for the change in the direction of price of gold and silver. So keep an eye on that. I don't expect that to change much, but it is interesting that uh, Jill Stein is acting as surrogate to challenge the election results, not in all the states that were close, but only the states that Donald Trump won narrowly. Uh, Trump also inferred that he won't prosecute Hillary Clinton. We'll discuss that again, the implications for gold and silver later in the podcast. And the Washington Post, the New York Times, and other mainstream media continue their fake news mantra. Uh, they are debunking stories by the alt media about Pizzagate. They're continuing to say that uh, fake news is being propagated by Russian agents. And I find it interesting that... One of the complaints I've always had about alternative media was while it did a good job of debunking mainstream media, it's still by commenting incessantly on mainstream media stories, allowed the mainstream media to control the narrative. So the mainstream media would come up with a story and the alternative media would say, this is a ridiculous story or would point out why the story was incorrect. But still, they were amplifying the message of the mainstream media. Well, what's happening now <clears throat> is you have, for example, Pizzagate, which is an alternative media. There's journalists researching the the idea that there's some child pedophile, pedophile ring running out of a DC um, pizza shop, and they're using it as a basis for that uh, research they've done through the WikiLeaks and so on. Not to get into the ins and outs of Pizzagate, but the Washington Post and the New York Times both decided that they needed to write a story debunking this Pizzagate, which is interesting because they both came to the conclusion, I'm sure not with much research, that these claims made by the Pizzagaters are absolutely false. And therein lies the change that we're seeing that the mainstream media now is so concerned that people are paying attention to alternative media and Pizzagate is just one example, that they had to respond and they had to write their own story on it. Top economic story of the week, dollar continues to soar. Now, this might be the reason why the Fed doesn't raise rates. The Fed, I believed all year would raise rates. One of the caveats I gave was that the Fed doesn't like to raise rates when the dollar is high. They like to have the dollar high before they begin one of their stimulus programs or, or cut rates. So we'll see how long the dollar stays up, whether there's any impact on their interest rate hike in December. I think even if the dollar index remains high, 
they'll still raise rates, but then they'll walk themselves back off the ledge. And if they do raise rates, they'll be very dovish about, uh, let's be patient about the next one. Let's wait and see. Let's see how Trump does and so on. So I don't, I, I kind of expect them to raise rates. I've said that all along last two years ago, last summer, two summers ago, they would raise rates once. I said at the beginning of this year, end of last year, that they'd talk all year about raising rates and probably do it once. I think we're still on path for a rate hike. But keep an eye on that dollar index, and if they do raise rates, keep an eye on what they say after they raise rates in December. The other thing is the Indian rupee demonetization continues to go, I say sideways here, it's probably south. And it just, I did a blog post and a YouTube video on this, far more detail, I'll link to it below. You can check it out at YouTube, you can check it out on smoggle.com. But I wanted to give a quick example of what it would be like here because there are people in the United States and that are defending the move as necessary to root out corruption and that it's not that big of a deal. And the example I give is, look, in India, 80, 85% of transactions are done in cash. Well, here in the United States, most of the transactions are done with credit cards. So imagine if President Obama got on TV tonight and said, by tomorrow night, you can't use your credit cards. And all the credit cards will be shut off by tomorrow night. And you're going to have to use cash from now on, which most people don't have cash around in sufficient quantities to pay their daily bills. And if you say, well, okay, that's not a problem. We'll go to the bank and get cash. Well, most banks don't have that much cash. So you get the analogy, you would then have to be scrambling to try to figure out how you're going to pay for stuff without your credit card. And the reason they give for shutting off the credit cards, it's to combat credit card fraud. See, this way, if you just shut off all the credit cards, now there can't be any credit card fraud. But the problem that means for the for the for everybody is less people other than people who just somehow managed to use cash is there's not enough cash in the bank if you go to get it they they just don't have it for you you have to wait in line they'd only give you small amounts of cash at each individual time companies would have trouble doing business people would have trouble buying groceries paying their bills so that kind of should give you an idea of what's going on in india and the Indian media is trying to make it sound like this is no big deal. 93% of Indians support it. And the, where they got that 93% number was uh, the prime minister had an app and you can like text him and tell him what you thought about it. And of course, no one's going to text the prime minister and say, this sucks. Uh, you know, you'd be subject to probably the Indian government coming to your house, arresting you and uh, or, or putting you under t tax investigation. So in any event, it, it looks like that that story is going to continue. And it, it looks like it was ill-conceived and it doesn't seem like they care. They're carrying forward. And you can find out more about that story. I'll update it again if more things happen. But there is a, a link below in this podcast. And there's also a update on the YouTube channel. Remember, if you're not a Small Gold subscriber, please sign up. The reason I ask you to subscribe to Small Gold is you never know when the YouTube channel or the Twitter account or any of the third-party services uh, somehow decide that Small Gold or you or anyone is not allowed to be on them. So if you're hooked up with Small Gold via subscription, which is free, you can always stay in touch and receive our content. Gold and silver, gold closed last week, down 1.9%. Silver managed to hang on, uh, only fell 4 cents. What does that do for the gold-silver ratio? Those of you interested in the gold-silver ratio, it was 72 to 1 at the end of the week. If you click on that link, I keep charts up to date. One day, one month, one year, five year, 10 year gold silver ratio. You can see them. The gold silver ratio was really high at the, be at the beginning of this year, it was reaching kind of an all time high of 84 to 1 when gold shut out of the gate and silver kind of lagged, but then kind of caught up. But as you can see, it's still, for those of you thinking you're going to get 11 to 1, it's just not going to happen. There's just I've done a blog post on it. I've done a YouTube video on it. I welcome your comments. I just don't think there's any way that the gold-silver ratio is going to fall to 11 to 1, 16 to 1. Charts of the week. Now, the reason gold and silver are falling is solely on sentiment. And I, meant, I mentioned that sentiment is measured by the open interest on COMEX, the gold and silver contracts, and also by the amount of Western money that flows into these ETFs. Now, you can see... I should have a better chart. This is a, 
a 10 year chart or 12 year chart but you can see 2016 million of the year all that money flowing into gold ETFs but eh, you can barely see it here but you can see the big drop that line right there from about 72 million ounces down to about 68 all within the last few weeks that's what drives the price of gold Western paper trading of gold ETFs same things happening to silver you can see the silver um, dollars flowing into silver ETFs and then you can see it's kind of fallen down there a bit from about 620 620 million ounces to 600 million ounces we'll keep an eye on that because for better or for worse supply and demand do not drive the gold and silver prices but the sentiment and the flows into these ETFs are what does it what does that do for American Silver Eagle premiums? Well, actually, that has nothing to do with American Silver Eagle premiums. Silver Eagle premiums tend to rise at the end of each year. You can see here, November, December, here, November, December. Uh, they rise because the mint stops production. And there's a little bit of inventory issues where perhaps the 2000 and the next year's issue the next year's mintage maybe the 2017 this year or 2016 last year are not available yet and they may run a little shortage of what they have left in the current years now the u.s mint it appears stopped making you know made their 37 plus million coins by the middle of the year stopped producing them and now they've stopped selling them as about a week ago so there may be a little tightness in the getting the 2016s or maybe a wait before the 2017s are ready so you do see a bit of a premium just a quick bit of advice you know if they go up much higher it doesn't reflect the shortage it re reflects of silver it reflects a shortage of available american silver eagles happens at the end of each year usually um, that may be the time to purchase other coins that are not uh, or other rounds that are not um, experiencing tightness in supply. So you do see that little bit of jump up, but it has gone down significantly from last year when the U.S. Mint ran out of silver planchets and so did the Canadian Mint, and then premiums shot up. So I expect this premium bit here to fall back in January once the U.S. Mint starts selling the 2016 coins. Reminder, if you don't want to buy precious metals, you don't think it's a good idea, but if you want to help out the Small Gold site, you can make a small donation. We have a small button on the site to do that. Oops, got it there twice. I got to take that off. All right, what did we report on during the week? During the week, we updated the America the Beautiful coin sales update, and that one is the Fort Moultrie. It's actually this podcast that you can click on is about the history of that coin. You can check that out. Gold. Now, Indians who bought gold in recent days to try to make sure their rupees were worth something, they may be tracked down by the Indian government. There's a story here and be forced to turn in their gold and get their gold monetization certificates from the government which will pay them interest on the gold don't know if that'll happen don't know if they can actually find everyone who bought gold but seems the indian government's pretty serious about this crackdown on cash and then of course if gold is helping them avoid the crackdown they're going to go after gold as well and in the podcast that i did two days ago we talked about the potential of a gold import ban and also the potential of the Indian government banning gold ownership or limiting gold ownership that has since been officially denied by the Indian government finance ministry spokesman but you know the old story when it don't believe until it's officially denied other stories again you can check out the blog post I'll leave a link here Russians extract coal from gold no Russians extract yeah, gold from coal. I thought I said coal from gold. But yes, there's probably small particles of gold in everything. And if you have the right procedures, you can get gold out of ocean water. You can get gold anywhere. It's just that it's not economical to find it in such small parts per billions in most cases. Click here. You can see a Christmas tree made of solid gold worth a few million dollars. Gold space race stories there. Um, Fed chatter. We are not hearing as much of it, I guess, because they've done their job in convincing everyone at least for now that there's going to be a rate hike 
and the markets actually believe it this time. I think market participants survey show 95 to 100 percent think there's going to be a rate hike. So they don't have to keep yakking. There's going to be a rate hike. The only reason they'd start yakking again is if people start to think, no, 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 there's not going to be a rate hike. Then you can bet they'll all be out there giving press conferences and speeches and making statements about why the Fed is rate hike is on the table and they mean it this time. U.S. Mint sales update. Gold sales continue to soar at the U.S. Mint. They'll probably have the best, if or if not the second best, uh, sales month, depending on when. what happens in the next few days in November. As I mentioned, American Silver Eagle sales are supposedly through for the year. And they finished at about $37 million, and they sold about $2.71 million American Silver Eagles this month. If you're interested in buying silver eagles gold eagles there's plenty of links on the small gold site i'll also have some links below the youtube video where you can click on them directly and make your purchases if you're so interested now if trump there, there was a story that trump might not bring charges against hillary clinton he had promised in a nationwide debate so it's not like anyone didn't see him uh said he would appoint a special prosecutor and then apparently he spoke to the new york times and and seemed to have backpedaled saying he didn't want to hurt the clintons and that he wouldn't prosecute them. The reason this story is important is if indeed the Secretary of State is indicted, the former Secretary of State is indicted, that would open up a whole can of worms with the president, foreign countries, the investigation, the, the charges that would be brought to involve a Clinton Foundation. It would get messy and um, there would probably be an impact on political certainty. But I wouldn't be so sure that if Trump gets past this election challenge in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, and does become, uh, it does get inaugurated, that he won't pursue charges. Because, first of all, what Trump said was, he's not going to pursue charges. Well, of course, he doesn't pursue charges. It's the FBI that does the investigation. It's the FBI that, in, that presents that evidence to the Department of Justice. And the Department of Justice is run by a new attorney general, the man that Donald Trump appointed, Sessions. And if Sessions says he's going to pursue an indictment, Donald Trump isn't going to stand in his way and say, no, I don't want to hurt the Clintons. Then he would be doing exactly what he criticized the current administration of doing, of interfering with justice. So he's not going to do that. And remember, he's also said that you don't tell whom you're going to attack the time and place. He constantly said that about how stupid are the, or how stupid are we telling the ISIS people we're gonna, we're gonna invade Mosul, we're gonna attack Mosul. Well, he probably doesn't want to say it's a sure thing that he's going to pursue charges against Hillary Clinton because then Donald Trump, I'm not Donald Trump, but Obama would certainly realize. Well, wait a minute, if he's gonna pursue charges. We think this is a witch hunt. I want to avoid this in the interest of the country and maybe in the interest of saving his own hide if he's involved in some of the um, emails with Hillary Clinton. Who knows? But that would give him a reason to uh, pardon Hillary Clinton. So if somehow Trump is called, is kind of bluffed here and Obama feels comfortable in not pardoning Hillary Clinton, and then after he gets inaugurated, the FBI presents more evidence to the DOJ, and the Attorney General Sessions says, I want to indict Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump is not going to say no. So we'll see. But again, the way this relates to gold and silver is that would be a massive story that would create a massive disruption, and that may be a reason why Donald Trump won't pursue it. But we'll see. Uh, on gold supply South Africa to exhaust gold reserves in less than 40 years. Yep, they will run out of gold. There's no, and they will run out of in ground silver. The question is whether, just like with oil, they come up with new ways of extracting gold and silver, just like they did with fracking. Um, will they do meteor uh, mining? That's on the table as well. Will they? pull gold and silver out of the ocean. Well, they do um, below the ground ocean mining. They haven't done that yet. And clearly there's probably gold and silver uh, below the ocean floor. They just haven't done it because it's not worth it to do it. It's too expensive. But again, if there's still demand for these commodities and um, they've run out below the ground in 30, 40 years or less, then you will see a rush to 
find other ways to find additional there's gold on Mars supposedly any of it more gold and silver updates more chances to buy gold and silver another reminder about the Black Friday Cyber Week and Cyber Monday gold and silver sale at small gold at that link US economic data continues to be so so although the durable goods number was good but we're not seeing any major acceleration acceleration only in the stock market which is reaching all-time highs um i think we're getting close to the end no more stories other than check out that india to ban gold ownership and imports podcast that i did earlier in the week and the last thing i want to mention is what do you guys think about if all this indian gold uh, banning or import banning or restricting ownership becomes a little more real what will happen to silver well indians turn to silver there is a article here from an indian newspaper about indians already starting to try to buy these silver bracelets as a form of preserving their wealth uh, last year uh, india imported about 30 percent 33 percent of the global silver mining production they haven't done that well or haven't imported that much silver this year nor have they imported that much gold this year but uh, that may be a silver lining for silver the gold issues that are happening in india thanks again for listening and remember to sign up for small gold subscribe and subscribe to this so you do that by just filling your email address there on the small gold website and to subscribe to this youtube channel and follow us on twitter thank you